Okay, cool. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, like, like my, my MC told, told you, I'm going to be talking about how to interact with systemd from high-level languages. This is uh, Divas journey. Um, Divas has been a little bit like misspoken lately, um, or has been in a lot of changes, and people have been like complaining about it. Uh, but this has been a long journey for me since 2016. Uh, I hope to share this with all of you. Um, OK, so as always, let's try to get started. Who am I? I'm Alvaro Leiva Gaise. Um, I'm one of those pesky Latins who has two last names. And my last name tends to be German, so I feel right at home. Uh, I'm also a father of two, a husband of one. Those are my kids. Uh, I'm an amateur cook, like it's good to have hobbies. I'm also in a very progressive rock band that eventually will break it. Uh, and in my spare time, I moonlight as a PE at Meta. I work at a team that is called uh, Python Foundation, and we are the one who kind of owns and manages the Python experience at Facebook. And if you develop in Python, you probably either hate us or love us, but there's no middle ground. Um, and even though like I work at Meta, this is applicable to every to everything uh, outside, right? So what are we here to talk? Well, I just say right. So that was my first slide. It's self-interactive with systemd from high from high-level languages. Uh, this is also going to be a little bit of a crash course in what Divas is and SDivas. I do realize that this audience must be like expert in Divas, but if that's not the case, this is going to be very useful. Um, and also, going to, we're going to be interacting with systemd using Divas from high-level languages, right? Uh, some extra cool stuff. Like we're going to take stuff that are like. Um, that doesn't look like systemd, but it is we're going to take code that was written in Python, and we're going to execute that code with, I don't know, uh, we're going to restrict the network interface. So that particular line of code will not be able to access the internet with the magic of cgroups and, and systemd. Cool. All right, so how does this start? It all started in 2016 when guess who had to upgrade from CentOS 6 to CentOS 7? I had to do that. So uh, when I joined Facebook, uh, the first thing that they gave it to me as a new guy was like, just do this upgrade. It's an OS upgrade. It should be easy. Um, let me ask a question to this group. Do you guys remember what thing was introduced in CentOS 7 that wasn't on CentOS 6? Exactly. You all said it. Systemd, right? So this was not only a migration like an OS, because that would be too easy, of course. There was a migration from Systemd, right? And if you remember those days, uh, we that means that we have to migrate from these scripts, which not only, not only is horrible, but also is a Cassandra in its script. So it's a horrible place to, um, to service units. Right? So it, it was very good. And we have so many in its script. Like it's, it was us in its script all the way down. We also did some really clowny stuff. Like um, I, You probably remember this, but to figure out which a service was open, uh, it was started, we have a pid file, then we have to check the command line, and then if the command line for that included a string, we would assume that the string came from the service, right? So very secure, very mindful, very demure. All right, so, you know, that was life back in the day. Uh, and I, I thought there was, should be like a better way. Then systemd came. Uh, systemctl was great, but it was meant for humans. And this is very funny, because uh, the following line is going to make a lot of people laugh. But uh, systemctl didn't have a systemctl that's, that's JSON that I could consume. Right? Uh, I didn't want to like chill out and parse string. I wanted to have something there. I'm not advocating for this to exist, and, but apparently will exist. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> okay, but also like chilling out is always clowning, right? So whatever it is, uh, we don't want to chill out. So um, I'll search in the internet. I found Leonard Post. Uh, back then, I was too new that I didn't even even knew who Leonard was or what System D was. So um, reading this was like, oh, this person kind of knows what he's talking about. So he was talking about uh, what System D. <laughs> Uh, what SDBus was, uh, that also what was SDBus, and how systemd used SDBus, and how systemd was exposing a public interface to their DBus internals. And I thought that was, this is cool, right? So I started looking at the code, and I kind of figured out that DBus was used everywhere. Uh, back then, uh, this was how systemctl worked. And it was like, oh, great, I have a programmable way to interact with this. Uh, today it's a little bit different, uh, but it's still like DBus calls, but it just wraps around other functions. Uh, but then I was always intrigued by systemd run. I found that tool to be incredibly amazing. Um, and, um, and it also like divas all the way down. So good. 
So what is Divas? It's a huge wall of text. Uh, but the important part is that, and we're going to go a little bit in this, but it has all of these characteristics, buses, object, interface, methods, signals, and properties. But this is the part that kind of like, uh, if you have heard my talk so far, it, I like it. It has a rich type system, so that means that a string is not a string. It's, if it is a number, it's an, it's an integer. Uh, but also more important, it has, uh, I don't need to know anything about the system. I just need to ask a few primitives, and it will tell me how the system behaves without me actually to know. Like, remember in the previous example, there was a PID file. So I, I needed to know the PID file path on disk. With this, I don't need to know anything, right? So it is like, I know that Divas exists, and from that, I can derive the entire system. And that is amazing. And this has binding from numerous programming language. And back then, we were mostly a Python shop, so I wanted to do this in Python. So, OK, cool. So keep in mind that I'm trying to reproduce what system CTL does. So this is what system CTL would show you when you try to query a, a service. Um, and this is what I mean by it has buses. So it means that there is a thing that is called the system bus, which is unique to the system. Uh, and everybody who is on the system and query the system bus will get the same information. But there is also, welcome. Uh, there, is, uh, there is some information. Uh, there's another bus that's called the user bus. And this user bus is unique to the user. So different users have different user bus. Originally, it was like per session, but now luckily is different sessions still maintain the same bus, right? So as you can see, like whatever was in the number one, it still is different between these two buses. So they have different views of the, of the system. Um, the way that I see it is like if you have web servers exposing to different IPs or different processes, this is kind of what, what this will be as an equivalent. All right, so if I scroll down that, that window over there, I will find that. And that kind of, okay, so I get that the bus now has a service, and the service is systemd and has that, that address. All right, this is good, we're making progress. So I can check the tree of that, uh, ob uh, of that service, and I get objects. And if I scroll down those objects, I will find that thing that even it looks very weird, it kind of, if I squint, says that it's crond.service. Right? So from nothing, now I get to the service. Now how do I know the things that the service has? Uh, it turns out that Divas has a concept of, uh, that you can introspect. So if I introspect, the service and the object, I'll get interfaces, methods, properties, and signals. Um, interfaces are a grouping of method, properties, and signals. Uh, and every Divas interface has at least, not every, by convention, it has the three interfaces, right? which is introspectable, peer, and properties. And if I hit the introspectable interface, I'll get this exact view. right? So now from nothing, you get to this. And with this information, if you leave if you stand up and leave, you would be able to build whatever I have built after this on your own in your programming language of choice. So now all we need is a binding. I went to the free desktop page to find what are the bindings that they, that they suggested. And back then, they suggested by Divas. Back then, it was in active development. Now it's in not in active development. So the, the owner says, like, don't use it. There was also Divas Python that back then was not in active de development, but now it is. So it, 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 it's weird. Um, but I honestly, I really, really, really wanted to use SDBus because uh, I wanted to basically just copy and paste the code that I would see on, on the GitHub page for systemd and just apply it to the things that I wanted. So systemd was born. This is a Python uh, thing that we, that we did at Meta where we bind uh, systemd uh, with Python. Uh, and it provided like a nice interface of Divas. Uh, for a while, it was part of the Facebook um, ecosystem, uh, but then we uh, it became part of the system. The um, like, I don't know what's the name of the first level of a system. <laughs> Thank you very much. GitHub Org. Um, it's it's mainly maintained by me and some other volunteers. Those two nice gentlemen and, and lady over there. Uh, but yeah, that's. That's the story. Okay, cool. So um, if you haven't been bored yet and we have time, I want to do some live demo to kind of show you what it is, because what can go wrong, right? All right, so can you see that? Yeah. Right, so okay, that's the logo of PSND, which is the logo of systemd.py. I feel very proud about that. All right, so um, we're, this is how it's going to go. We're going to go from Divas to systemd 
to doing weird stuff with systemd and Python, right? So that's how we're going to go in case that you want to follow up. Uh, okay, so let's, this is very simple. Um, let's start with we don't know nothing about the system, and we want to attack a generic uh, things that is on the bus. So you would pass the encode uh, the path, so you would encode the path. Like, remember, it has weird two underscore something. And then you will create this object. Now, if you have this object, uh, OK, uh, you see that now I get here a couple of things. That is the service and the unit. These were by free. Uh, you get uh, the, the main interfaces. So if in this case, I think I can get the unit, and then there is a no, I think it's the, yes, perfect. If I go and query the service, I will get the main field of the service. Now, if I, I do type, like it, it's an integer, right? I know that at this point, everybody is not surprised by this, but I still like that. Uh, I can also do something like properties, and then I can call a method, right? And I can get the same information by just calling the property interface. Now, uh, I can do... Um, I always forget what is the one. Uh, yeah, okay. Yes, I can. I can, for instance, like restart directly from there, and then you see that the that the unit changed. Okay, cool. So now you see, like, uh, without knowing anything, you can interact with any of these. And and you, like, if you want, like, there are like other interfaces that you can play around. You don't need to play with just system D interfaces. You can do with time date, and uh, you can get time date that. Mm -hmm. Yes, list time zones, and then you will get all the time zones of your phone. Okay. So that's a generic uh, unit. But we are talking about systemd, so we also kind of just use the unit property. So as you can see now, we call it, it's way smaller. It just has uh, the name of, of the unit. But if, in practicality, it's just the same thing. It just makes, makes things easier for you. I'm not going to spend too much time on this, because you're now getting the whole point of it. We can also just talk to the manager, right? So instead of like talking per unit, we can talk to the manager, uh, and we can do uh, something like a, yeah, we can list all the unit files that the system has, for instance. Perfect. And now you get you, you can get directly. Uh, you can yeah that 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 was that took a while that makes me scared. Okay. Um, what was the uh, yeah. Uh, you can get uh, all the processes that a unit has, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So you can interact with the manager. The beauty of this is that if we also have here, and we will talk it a little bit, uh, we have this particular uh, call. Uh, how many of you are familiar with this Divas call? Oh, that's, that's great. That, that's where all the magic happened with systemd run, and we're going to abuse the crap out of that. Um, but, but yeah, so. Now, now, now you can see now. Now the good thing is that you can just jump in, debug it. So you can jump in into your Python shell, check on your bus, and start debugging it and start seeing what it is calling functions, reading, <coughs> reading properties. And I don't have time, but you can actually subscribe and monitor to the bus, and you can get events <coughs> and read this event directly from from Python. Uh, okay. So now time for some piston the example. So if you see Python has this thing that is called suprocess.run that allows you to run a suprocess, right? So this one in particular, I can do that, and I can do if I if I have time, you and I pick it up. Yeah. Let's see if I can actually see it. Yeah, you see, like that's that's the process. It's running right there. Now, with PSMD, you have the same ability, but the only difference is that instead of like running the the thing in the process tree, like you see with my same users, five minutes. Okay, I will hurry up then. Uh, you can um, you can run the same thing, but it starts running as a different unit over there, right? So now you can interact directly creating uh, ephemeral units directly from uh, your coding language. So you can do other stuff, right? So you can mix whatever you, you have your own 
programming shell, and then you can call this unit and then just tie it to yourself and control what the unit is doing directly from Python doing stuff. In this case, I started a shell, and you can see I can do whatever I want, uh, and it's there on the shell. And I exit and I go back to my, to my thing thing. So kind of like when you do systemcd run.pty, but in this case, you are Pro, you're uh, protecting this or uh, interacting with this from the programming language. Uh, this means that we can also do more crazy stuff, like, for instance, like adding all the crazy properties that we have, where we can uh, call and say, like, oh, yeah, you cannot ping a certain IP from your thing, but you can ping uh, all the IPs by just adding, like, this nice PPF uh, filter. All right, and here is the two last, last examples. Uh, I have a code here, um, and if I do htop, um, okay, so I can, I can call CPU ways. This is just code, code honestly, not shell out code that uh, you call there, uh, and it's going to try to waste CPU by just like doing a while loop, and you see that it uses 100%. Uh, I can do. I can use futures.run and call this same thing, but now I, now I can pass a certain attribute. So what this is going to do, and I can explain that if somebody asks me in the question section, uh, but as you can see, now I'm executing that. I'm not using more than 10%, and it's with the user nobody. So it's, and if I would do below, you would see that this is actually running on a different uh, C group. So that's kind of cool. And the last one is this one over here that uh, you can start a pool of processes. Uh, so you can, start, you can start a C group, put a worker there, or whatever is the right word for that, uh, and then start just like sending words, uh, words to this, right? So I can call this, and I never, and I always forget the, ah, all right, cool. And as you can see, the, I start a bunch of workers that are trying executing process, and they are all sharing the restriction of uh, like using 25% of the CPU, uh, and you cannot able to see because. Uh, and as you can see, like as they are die, uh, after die, they are gonna start like like uh, freezing up, and things that are alive can use more of the CPU. The same. What do you do with CPUs? So uh, that's it. Um, that was all the fun things that we have for today. Thanks everyone for this wonderful talk. Are there any questions? Okay, one. But maybe to interject with one question. So, PistMD is very nice. I, I used it in the past, but it's using Siphon, so it, it has a compilation step. Yeah. Did you consider using C types? No, because uh, up until like 25 minutes ago, I didn't know that that was a possibility. Okay, yeah, that's the thing uh, done by Alison Kalitska yeah, at Red Hat. Okay. SystemD C types, also very nice. I don't think as mature as PistMD, but oh. This is awesome, thank you. Um, how do you deploy it? Is it as simple as pip install? Or? Yeah, so uh, pip install, DNF install, we are in a couple of, of distros. Uh, but it's just, it's just simple as pip install. Uh, you do need to have a, a compiler in your machine. Like uh, there is no such thing as a wheel for this, so you will not get a preview bi binary. But that's it, and that's just how you use it. Fantastic. I've just installed it on Debian, the, the package uh, Python three, PyStemd, but I don't have a PyStemd shell like you just had. Oh how, yeah, I can. How so do I? I, 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 I can share the, the code. I will, I, will make a, I will make a pull request and add it to, to the system. The, but, yeah, uh, but in general, it's literally just a Python and then, or you install a Python shell and then do import, import a pistemd. Oh. My pistemd shell, the beauty that it has, or the reason why I use it, is because it has a, sorry, it has a helpers for doing the presentation. So, if I'm 
So what I've installed is a library, is it? It's not an executable. Yes, exactly. It's a oh, library. Right, okay. So yeah, you use it. My my tell the thing that it has is that I press end and it shows me code and it kind of like preloads stuff, so I don't have to type it in a live demo. It's just for helps. Yeah, just to open a shell, import pistmd, it'll work. More questions? No. Then let's thank Alvaro again. Thank you very much. See you on the boat.